Hi Flashes, this is Mrs. Reed. I will be going through today's notes over slope. Um, so when we find slope, we can identify the type of slope that it is. We can find slope from a gr given graph and we are also going to be talking about the slope formula. So let's remember what slope is. Uh, so the definition of slope is how steep a line is. And we always represent slope as the rise over the run. In other words, the change in y over the change in x. So the definition of slope is how steep a line is. And to find slope from a graph, we're going to be using rise over run. And to find slope from a table, we are going to be using the change in y's over the change in x's. So when we say rise, what does that mean? Well, when we're rising, we are talking about how far up or down a line increases or decreases. So remember rising, we're talking about how far up or down a line increases or decreases. And when we're talking about running, so when you're finding slope from a graph, you always start with the point furthest to the left. So that when you start with the point furthest to the left on the graph, you are always going to be running to the right. So when you're running, uh, you're going to figure out how far right a line increases. So we're always going to be running to the right and when you're running to the right on a coordinate plane that talks about your positive so we're only going to be talking about how much it increases. Okay. Alright, so first thing, uh, let's remember the different types of slope that we have. So we have a positive slope, a negative slope, a slope of zero, and a undefined slope. So a positive slope, it looks like your line is going uphill. So you read graphs like you read a book. You always start furthest to the left. So if you start the line furthest to the left, notice how my pen is going up. So it's like it's going uphill, so this is why it is a positive slope. And then the opposite of a positive slope is a negative slope. So again, you read a graph going left to right. If you start uh, your line up here furthest to the left and you follow the line on the graph, notice how my pen is going down, so it is like it is downhill. And this is how we indicate that it is a negative slope. The other two types of slope that we have um, are some special cases of slope. So if you have a line that is just a straight horizontal line, we call this a zero slope. And then if you have a vertical line, we call this a undefined slope. So these are two special cases that you guys need to remember. And I know for my class, I know that I show or will show uh, Slope Dude. And on the video Slope Dude, it talks about him skiing. And he is able to ski on this kind of line because that just means that he's skiing on a flat part. So this is why it would be a zero slope. However, if he were to ski on this type of line, he's pretty much falling off the mountain. So that's why it would be an undefined slope. All right, so we kind of have already talked about this, but this is how you find slope. Um, you are using the rise over run formula when you are finding slope from a graph. And then you are going to be using the change in y over the change in x formula when you're finding slope from a table. So uh, the slope is a ratio of how many you have to go up or down over how far you go right or left. And I'm just going to tell you guys that we're always going to be going to the right because we're always going to be starting with the point furthest to the left. Um, if you have to move down, that means that your number is negative. 
and then you always write your slope in simplest form. And slope is always written as a fraction, not a mixed number. So you want to keep it as an improper fraction. Just make sure that it is simplified all the way. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's look at some examples. So again, when you are finding slope from a graph, you're using rise over run. And then when you are finding slope from a table, you are looking at the change in y over the change in x. And mathematical terminology, we use a triangle to show uh, or to represent change. Okay, so here we have a graph. So we are going to be using the rise over run. And notice how they're telling us that the run part here is 48 and the rise part of this treadmill is 10. So if we are using the slope formula of rise over run, which number represented the rise? The 10 did, right? This is how far up the treadmill is. So your rise is 10. Your run is 48, so your slope is 10 over 48, but you do need to simplify it. So if I were to divide both of these by 2, I get 5 over 24, and that would be my final slope. Okay. Uh, so next one here, look at B. So again, you need two points on a line in order to find slope, and they give us those two points. And remember, you're always starting with the point furthest to the left. So if I'm reading this line, I can see that it's going uphill, so I know that it is a positive slope. And the first point that I hit is this one right here. So I'm going to start here, and my goal is to get from this point to this point, okay? And all that we need to do is we just need to rise, because again, our formula is rise over run. I'm trying to figure out how far do I rise to get to this point, and then how far do I run to get this to this to get to this point. So let's just count. So if I were to go from here to here, I'm gonna go up one, two, three. And again, since I went up, that is telling me that my slope is positive, so it is a plus three. And then when you're running, it's always positive because we're running to the right. So let's see how far we run to get, the, to get to the second point. One, two, three, four. So I ran four. So if my slope is rise over run, we rose three to get to that second point. So that's a positive three. We ran four and that is simplified. So my slope is three over four. And our last example here is a table. So now instead of using rise over run, we are using our formula, the change in y over the change in x. So the change in y over the change in x. So here in the table, they're telling you that y is represented by the pages left and x is represented by the time. So when you're looking at your change in y's, you are trying to ask yourself, okay, how did we get from 12 to 9? Well, 12 minus 3 gave me 9. Then you're doing it again. How do we get from 9 to 6? Well, once again, that was minus 3. And then lastly, to get from the 6 to 3, we once again went down 3. So if you guys notice here, our change in y's were minus 3 every time. So change in y was minus 3. Then you're going to do the same process over here with your x's. So when we went from 1 to 3, we added 2. 3 to 5, we added 2. And 5 to 7, we also added 2. So your change in x's, since they were constant, were a positive 2. So your slope, change in y's, negative 3, over change in x's, which were the 2's. So your slope is negative 3 over 2. All right, and then the last type is using the slope formula. So this slope formula is given to you guys on your quizzes and tests, so you guys don't have to memorize it. Um, so what it is, is if you are given two ordered pairs, 
okay so let me just write this over here off to the side if you are given two order pairs, your first set of order pair, we use this uh, subscript and we're going to label it as ones. So remember your first number in your, alt, in your order pair is always X and your second number in your order pair is your Y value. So when you use the order pair X comma Y, we put little subscripts down here to tell you that this was the first set of order pairs because I'm going to be writing two different order pairs and the first order pair would be rep represented by x1, y1, and then your second order pair will be represented by x2, y2. Okay, so that's why you see some twos and ones in here in your formula with two different y's and two different x's. So if you're trying to find slope from order pairs, the formula is you're taking y2 minus y1, so this is your change in y formula, over x2 minus x1 which is your change in x formula so all that we're going to do is we're going to be looking at different sets of order pairs we are going to be plugging in these numbers that are going to be given to us into the formula and then we're just going to simplify it so let's try it out so here again i'm going to use this format so my first order pair is always x, y, and we use subscripts of ones to indicate that that was the first order pair. So this is x1, y1. And then your second order pair, again, it's still the x, y, but now it's x2, y2. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug these numbers into our formula, and then we're just going to solve. So slope, we represent it by the letter m equals y2. So what number was y2 down here? y2, we represent it as negative 9, so I'm going to plug in negative 9 for y2 in my formula, minus y1, so what number indicated y1? Right here, 0. So I'm going to take negative 9 minus 0 over, so that's gone, x2 minus x1. So x2 we indicated by 3, so I'm going to plug in 3 for x2, minus x1, which we indicated as 0, and then now I'm just going to solve. So if I were to take negative 9 minus 0, that's just negative 9. 3 minus 0 is just 3. And then I'm just going to simplify this. So negative 9 divided by 3, I can divide it by 3 on uh, the top and the bottom. And my final answer will be negative 3 over 1 or just negative 3. Okay, so let's try another one. So let's try B. So again, all that I'm doing is I'm going to plug these numbers into the formula and then I'm just going to solve it. So I like to write above my numbers, indicate them as the x1, y1 for the first order pair, and then x2, y2 for the second order pair. So now let's just plug those numbers in our formula. So slope is represented by m. So m equals y2 minus y1. So y2 is negative 2. Y1 was 6, so I'm going to take negative 2 minus 6 over X2 minus X1. So X2 was negative 4, X1 was negative 4, so please be careful on this. So you're taking negative 4 minus X1, which was also a negative 4. So your final denominator should be negative 4 minus a negative 4. Alright, so then now we can just solve it. So if we were to take negative 2 minus 6, that gives us negative 8. Look at your denominators. We have negative 4 minus a negative 4. So remember when I see a minus a negative, that means the same thing as adding a positive. So then negative 4 plus a positive 4 is 0. Now I know that I taught this to my classes, but I'm sure some of us forgot if you have a denominator of zero so anytime you see a zero in your fraction for slope this is going to be talking about one of those special cases that we talked about on the front side so a slope of zero or an undefined slope so 
let's think about this. Or you can even do this in your calculator. If I pulled out my calculator here and I were to take negative 8 divided by 0, it's going to give me an error. So this means that negative 8 divided by 0 is not a zero slope. It is actually an undefined slope because even our calculator says that we cannot take a number divided by 0. So what you guys are going to have to write is you're going to have to write undefined uh, for your answer, okay? Another way to help you guys remember this besides just plugging it in your calculator um, is the okay and no that I have talked about in class. So it is okay to take zero divided by a number because zero divided by a number is going to equal zero. However, no, it's not okay to take a number divided by zero because this is when you're going to get an error, which means that you're going to have an undefined solution. So just a different way to think about it. So, okay, it's okay to take a zero divided by a number. No, it's not okay to take a number divided by zero. So that's why in this case right here, when we took negative eight divided by zero, we got an undefined solution. All right, so I want you guys to try the next two problems. So go ahead and pause this video for me. Uh, try out the next two problems and then let me know or press play when you guys are ready. Okay, so you guys should be done with C and D, so let's see how you guys did. Um, so again, all that you guys are doing is you are plugging your X1, Y1 and X2, Y2 into the slope formula equation. Um, so for this one, you guys should have had 4 minus 4 over negative 3 minus 5. And when you guys want to go simplify that, 4 minus 4 gave you 0, negative 3 minus 5 gave you negative 8. So again, as soon as you guys see that you have a 0 in your fraction for your slope, you have one of those special types of uh, slope that we talked about on the front side. So when you take zero divided by negative eight, again, you can do this in your calculator, it does give you zero. So this means that you are going to have a zero slope. Okay. And then the last one, so again, I find it way easier to label my X1s and Y1s and X2s and Y2s. So when you guys went to plug it in your formula, again, slope is represented by the letter M, and it's going to be M equals 1 minus 5 over 6 minus negative 2. And when you guys solve that, 1 minus 5 was negative 4. 6 minus a negative 2 is 8, and that did simplify to negative 1 over 2. And that is it. Um, so good job if you guys got those. If not, make sure you guys look at my work and look at your work to see where your mistake was at. Um, and if you guys have any more questions, please let your teacher know. Thank you.